one day in a certain village in a certain part of the world there was a wild elephant on the loose. The villagers went to a priest and asked him if he could do something to help them. The priest went to the encounter of the elephant who was running wild. When the elephant met the priest, the elephant slowed his pace, knelt down, bowed his head, and the priest, seeing the reaction of the elephant, gave him a blessing. And the elephant went his way, the village was safe, nothing happened, everybody was fine. And of course, everybody started thanking the priest. Who was this priest? Where was he born? Where did he do his apostolate? Stay watching until the end and you will find out. When Father Joseph Vas, an Indian saint from the city of Goa, when he was a little boy, he would often, at nighttime, around midnight, one o'clock in the morning, he would sneak out from his window, he would climb down a rope, and he would go to the nearby church to pray. And there something miraculous would happen. When he would approach the doors of the church, they would open by themselves, he would enter into the church, and they would close. There he would spend nights in vigil, because he always had the desire to become a priest. And so he would ask God for graces and to bless his vocation. In the later half of the 17th century, he was ordained a priest. After he was ordained, how did he start his priestly career? The first thing he did was consecrate himself to Our Lady in a similar way to which St. Louis de Montfort would later preach in France a little, a little while later in the early 18th century. And this consecration that he made to Our Lady would be the success of all of his apostolate that he would do in the future. Because Our Lady would for his entire life constantly cover him with her motherly mantle. Now, it came to his ears that in the island of Ceylon, which is nowadays Sri Lanka, which is off the southern coast of India, there the Protestants from Holland were taking over. There was a lot of Buddhists on the island, and on another hand, a lot of Protestants. And he wanted to go there to help the few Catholics that were still on the island. When he asked permission from the superior, he was first declined because of the dangers that it implicated his traveling to this island because the Protestants there were expelling all of the priests. They were destroying churches. They were prohibiting the Catholic practices. And so it was something very dangerous. So before he went there, he was actually sent to another city, another state. Karnataka. And in this state, there occurred a very interesting miracle. One day, a few men from the village where he was doing apostolate approached him and asked him if he could give the sacrament of the sick to somebody who was dying. And naturally, Father Joseph Vaz accepted and followed the men. It was already night. They took him up on top of a hill, and there he re they revealed their true plot, their true plan. What they wanted to do was to kill Joseph Vaz. And Joseph Vaz, seeing himself in a difficult situation, saw that he had no other thing to do except to pray to God. Because the men told him, you renounce what you're doing, you stop preaching the Catholic faith here in this village, or we're going to kill you. So he went to a nearby, kind of like a rocky area that was there on the hill, and he knelt and he asked God to intercede for him. He also even asked God, similar to what our Lord did on the cross, he asked our God to forgive those who were persecuting him. He also made the same prayer. And in that instant, a great light appeared, and from the ground below where he was kneeling, a couple streams of water started flowing. Awestruck and, and full of fear, his persecutors fled, and Father Joseph Vass went on his way back to his parish unharmed. One other day after teaching catechism, he was on his way back to his house late at night. And this would happen more than once. This occurred many times. There was a certain tree on the path where he was walking that would start to sway, but there was no wind. And the leaves would start to rustle and he would become very scared, very afraid. He didn't know what was going to happen. And at this point, the devil would appear to him and say, Father Joseph, why are, you, why are you doing all of this apostate? Stop with these catechism classes. 
This is a waste of time. You're wasting your time and effort and your energy. Come here to my kingdom. Do what, do what I want you to do, and I'll give you everything you want. Father Joseph Voss simply would kneel down. He would make the sign of the cross, and the devil would disappear. A simple sign of the cross was enough to exorcise that devil that wanted to perturb the soul of Father Joseph Voss. And so we see that Father Joseph Voss was always a man of great faith. There was a group of priests there in Goa, in India, who were part of the Congregation of the Oratory, which was founded by St. Philippe Neri. And Joseph Voss, he also became part of this congregation. And so time passed, and he never forgot his desire to go and help the Sri Lankans. At that time, it was called Ceylon, that island off the southern part of India. He made his trip in the year 1686. When he arrived, he became very sick. Providence permitted that um, for him to become ill. And so that was his first trial. We see that his mission, the saints, they are always tried by God. In order to fulfill completely God's designs, they are tried. And they have to overcome constantly obstacles that are put before them. After he became better, he started evangelizing. There he would sometimes dress as a beggar, sometimes as a bread seller, sometimes as a laundry man, because there the, the commanders of the Protestant, the Dutch Protestant, were persecuting very greatly the Catholics. And any priest that they found, they would send away back to India, or they would put them in prison. And so for years and years, he would do apostolate there, escaping, and there's actually a very interesting story. One time he was celebrating Mass in Our Lady's house, and they saw that the, the soldiers were arriving to knock on the door. So he quickly took off his vestments that he was celebrating Mass, but he had nothing to disguise himself. And so the soldiers walked in and asked the lady, is there a priest here? And she said, no, there's no priest here. I don't know what you're talking about. And they insisted. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she takes up a broom and, and hits Father Joseph Vass on the back and says, get back to work, you, you servant, you, you useless servant. Why are you, why are you standing here doing nothing? And so he took the broom and on his humbleness and started sweeping the house. And, and the soldiers searched and they found no priest, he was, he was saved. And so he was years in situations similar to this one. Until one day when he went to the city of Kandy. Kandy, there was a king, an independent king who lived there. And eventually the Protestants accused to the king that Father Joseph Vass was a spy. So the king ordered him to be put into jail until a time came when there was a great drought in those lands. There was no rain for a long time. There was famine. People were starting to die. The cattle would start to die. Plants couldn't grow and all of the things that famine brings with it. And so the king brought forth a Buddhist priest and asked him, can you please pray to your God so that he will send rain to the God of Buddha? And the Buddhist priest prayed and of course, no rain. And so then he finally called forth Father Joseph Vaz. Well, if, if your God is the true God, we'll pray to him so that he'll send us rain. And Father Joseph made a prayer asking for God to send rain. And there was such a downpour of rain that the, for the next couple of days. And the king was so pleased that not only did he free Father Joseph Vaz from his imprisonment, but he also freed all of the Catholics and gave full liberty to the Catholic faith to do whatever they liked in those lands. Of course, the Protestant persecution continued. And F Father Joseph Vaz, he lived in these lands for over 20 years. He is known as one of the founders of the church in those lands. And it is a great lesson for us because Father Joseph Vaz was responsible for the conversion of over 100,000 souls. He converted innumerable Buddhists, innumerable Protestants. He helped the Catholic in their faith. And this is a great lesson for us because Father Joseph Vaz was responsible, they say, for over 100,000 conversions of people from other faiths, and even the help that he gave to the Catholics, because there in Candy, the Catholics were without a priest for over 50 years. That means they were unable to confess, they were unable to assist Mass. Imagine even the despair that this would cause to somebody finding themselves in a state of sin. So imagine the joy that they had when Father Joseph Vaz came to them and gave himself entirely. Let us ask Father Joseph Vaz to give us the grace to overcome all of the challenges that we may encounter in our day-to-day -day apostolate. Salve Maria! If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.